all fathers out there. Happy Father's Day po sa ating lahat. Today, we are going to discuss areas in criminalistics. And criminalistics under the new CMO is now called as forensic. When it comes to the course description of each subject under forensic, there are minimal changes under the old CMO. For example, police photography is now forensic photography. Polygraphy lie detection is now lie detection techniques. When it comes to legal medicine, it is now removed as one of the forensic subject. And forensic chemistry and toxicology is now considered as forensic subject. For today's discussion, I am going to still use criminalistics in order to avoid confusion. Before I am going to discuss the different areas in forensic under the new CMO, I am going to discuss forensic. For the etymology of the word forensic, it came from a Latin that is forensis, which means forum. Forum means a place related to public place or marketplace. And a marketplace in the early period is where a public discussion is being held. Later, forensic is used specifically in a sense of pertaining to legal trials. That's why forensic pertains to or suitable for court of laws. For the first forensic subject, that is forensic photography, photography refers to a study concerned with the production of permanent records of image by combined action of light on sensitive surface that is a sensitized material in layman's term that is film a mechanical device that is a camera a chemical processing that is the developing and photography is an art at the same time a science and a practice of creating durable image by recording light on my succeeding videos i am going to discuss why photography is an art at the same time science and a practice when it comes to the etymology of the word photography, it came from a Greek word that is phos, which means light, and graphi, graphos, or graphins, graphene, which means drawing. For the definition of forensic photography, it refers to the field covering the legal application of photography in criminal jurisprudence and criminal investigation. When it comes to personality that is dated back by our history that has a little knowledge when it comes to the science of photography or initiated what we call the science of photography, we have Mute. Mute, in the 5th century BC, he is a Chinese philosopher who noted that a pinhole can form an inverted and focused image when light passes through the hole and into a dark area. He is the first recorded person to have exploited this phenomenon to trace the inverted image to create a picture. He is followed by Aristotle. In 4th century BC, he observed a partial solar eclipse in 330 BC by seeing the image of the sun projected through a small spaces between the leaves of a tree. For the second forensic subject that is personal identification, if you are going to ask a criminology about personal identification, immediately they will answer fingerprinting or dactyloscopy. But take note that personal identification is a broad subject. Why? Later we will know why personal identification is a broad subject. Before that, we are going to uh, differentiate uh, different definition of terms when it comes to personal identification. Number one, personal. Personal refers to anything related to or belonging to an individual. So anything, gadgets, or any that is associated to an individual is called a personal. Identification refers to the action or process of identifying someone or something or the fact of being personally or being identified. So if we are going to combine personal and identification, it refers to the process or technique or approaches or means of establishing the identity of a particular person. For personal identification, there are many ways or various ways on how to identify a person. 
that is through ordinary and scientific methods. For ordinary methods of identification, we have race, we have tattoo marks, we have weight, we have deformities, we have birthmarks, moles, bars, and tribal marks. That is only an example of ordinary method of identification. But there are lots of ways on how to ordinarily identify a person. Next, we have scientific method of me or medical legal methods on identifying a person. Number one, fingerprinting or dactyloscopy. Fingerprinting is the focus of personal identification, but there are many ways on how to identify a person through scientific or medical legal methods. We have odontology. We can identify a person through studying his dentures or his teeth or her teeth. We have determination of age, blood and blood stain, identification of skeleton, hair and fibers, determination of sex, and DNA. When it comes to the focus of personal identification, fingerprinting or dactyloscopy refers to the identification of person through examination and comparison of fingerprint. And dactylography, the scientific study of fingerprint as a method of identification. For the personalities that have major contribution in the science of fingerprinting, we have John Evangelist Porkenji. He published, or he is a Czech or Czech psychologist and philosopher of anatomy at the University of Roslo. Published a thesis in 1823 discussing the nine fingerprint patterns, but he did not mention any possibility of using fingerprints to identify a person or a people. We have George von Misner. He is a German anatomist who studied friction ridges. Next, we have Sir William James Herschel. He initiated the fingerprinting in India in 1877 at Hooghly near Calcutta. He instituted the use of fingerprinting on contrast and did, or contracts, I should say, and deeds to prevent the rampant repudiation of signatures, and he also registered government pensioners' fingerprint to prevent the collection of money by relatives after pensioners' death. So speaking of Father's Day, we have Professor Marcelo Malpighi, the grandfather of dactyloscopy. We have Johannes Evangelist Porkenji, the father of dactyloscopy. Dr. Edmond Lupard, the father of poroscopy. Sir William J. Herschel, the father of cheroscopy. Sir Edward Richard Henry, the father of fingerprints. Next criminalistics that we are going to discuss is the new forensic subject under the new CMO, that is the Forensic Chemistry and Toxicology. Although this is not new because under the old curriculum, it is uh, still there. That Forensic Chemistry still teach under the old curriculum, but it is not considered as major subject. But under the new CMO, Forensic Chemistry is now considered as major, major subject under the Forensics. For forensic chemistry and toxicology, forensic refers or forensic chemistry refers to the application of chemistry to criminal investigation. It focuses on the chemical analysis of substance connected to crime. Next, we have toxicology. For toxicology, it refers to medical and legal aspect of the harmful effect of chemicals on human beings. So the etymology of the word toxicology, it came from a Greek word that is toxicos. Toxicos means poisonous and lugos means study. For the father of toxicology, we have Celsius. For the modern father of toxicology, I don't know what, how to read his name. Maybe that is Macho or Ophelia. And we have the father of early chemistry or father of chemistry that is Jabber Ibn Hayan or Jabber. For the next criminalistic subject for question document examination, documents refers to any materials containing marks, symbols, or signs either visible 
partially visible that may represent or ultimately convey a meaning to someone, maybe in a form of pencil, ink writing, typewriting, or printing on paper. So the definition of document is very broad. As long as there is lettering, as long as it conveys a meaning to the reader, it is a document according to its definition. When it comes to question, it refers to any material which someone issue has been raised or which is under scrutiny. And if we are going to combine question document, it refers to one which the facts appearing therein may not be true and the contested either in a whole or part with respect to its authenticity, identity, or origin. When it comes to personality that has a major contribution in the field of question document examination that is on Albert Sherman Osborne. He became the preeminent American pioneer in the field when he authored question documents, a seminal work in scientific document um, analysis that remains in print and in use. He founded the American Society of Question Document Examiners in 1942. Next, criminalistics is lie detection techniques. When it comes to lie detection techniques, it is the same to personal identification. Why? This subject is also a broad subject, but it merely focuses on psychological detection of deception or what we call polygraphy. But there are many ways on how to detect uh, a person if he or she is lying but take note that we can detect liar we can only record the psychological responses of the subject and we can interpret if the person is lying or not but we can literally detect a person if he or she is lying when it comes to the definition of lie it refers to any untruthful statement falsehood Anything that deceives or creates false impression to make untrue statement knowingly, especially with, with intent to deceive and to give an erroneous or misleading impressions. When it comes to detection, it refers to the act of detecting, discovery, perceiving, finding, or uncovering something obscure. But take note that lie detection is an inaccurate term for polygraphy. Why? Because we doesn't detect lie. Examiner doesn't detect lie. The polygraph machine or the polygraph doesn't detect lie. It only record it only records psych psychophysiological changes occurring on the body of the uh, subject. Next, polygraphy refers to the scientific method of detecting deception with the use of polygraph instrument. This is the new name of lie detection, but there is the most uh, use or widely used terminology in order to describe polygraphy. That is the psychophysiological detection of deception that is PDD. Going back to polygraphy, the etymology of the word polygraphy, it came from Greek word poly and krapos graphene, which means uh, poly means many and graphos means writing. So literally translated as many writings. But take note, we can call the science of detecting deception using polygraph as polygraphy, but according to some polygraphies, it is uh, accurate to say that it should be called a psychophysiological detection of deception rather than calling it as polygraphy. For notable persons who have major contribution when it comes to science of polygraphy, we have Cesar Lombroso. He invented in 1895 a device to measure changes in blood pressure for police case. We have John Larson, a medical student at the University of California at Berkeley, invented polygraph in 1921. The device record both blood pressure and galvanic skin response. Further work on this device 
was done by Leonard Killer. We have Leonard Killer, a co-inventor of polygraph. He developed the so-called cardio pneumocycogram capable of detecting deception and worked on to, on to produce a modern polygraph. We have William Marston. William Marston is an American who used blood pressure to examine German prisoners of war. We have John Reed. In 1948, he developed a device which record muscular activity accompanying changes in blood pressure. He claimed greater accuracy could be obtained by making the recording simultaneously with standard blood pressure, pulse, and respiration recordings. When it comes to the last forensic subject, that is the forensic ballistics. So ballistics refers to the science of motion of projectiles. When it comes to the etymology of the word ballistics, that is came from balor balin, that is a Greek word which means to throw. And we have ballista, an old English that is balliste. Um, that is a middle 18th century English word that came from the Romans about early 16th century. This was the description of a catapult or a gigantic bow. This is commonly used by Romans to hurl large stones or arrows at a great distance to kill animals or to fight their enemies. But take note, if you are looking on the definition of ballistics, it refers to the science of the motion of the projectile itself. So that's it. But take note that in broadest sense, if we are talking ballistics in broadest, it refers to the study of projectiles, firearms, and ammunition, including characteristics of firearms that affects the way of projectiles are fired. So ballistics doesn't only stop with the study of motion of projectiles, but it includes all related matters when it comes to ballistics. Uh, when it comes to forensic ballistics, it is refers to the scientific analysis of all ballistics related phenomena to interpret or establish the true facts of legal proceedings in the solution of case involving firearms. When it comes to personalities that has notable contribution when it comes to the field of forensic ballistics, we have Calvin Goddard, the father of modern ballistics. Eugene Stoner, the developer of AR-15, uh, commonly known as the M16 rifle. We have Alexander John Forsyth, the father of percussion fiction. So that, that's all for today. And expect that we are going deeper with the discussion when it comes to the forensic subjects. So thank you and God bless.